I can't really believe I'm saying this to you, but today is Embarkation Day here in Sydney, Australia. In a few hours from now, I'm hopefully, all going well, going to be boarding Coral Princess down in Sydney Harbour. Now, anyone who's seen pictures of Sydney Harbour with the ship in port will know that, in theory, it should be directly beside the Sydney Harbour Bridge on one side and directly opposite the Sydney Opera House on the other. So, <laughs> I actually can't even imagine how it is going to feel to be standing on a ship there. But look, today I've been counting down this cruise for a number of reasons. First up is that this is the year that Australia has returned to cruising. Now, if you watch this channel from the UK or you're just generally familiar with the market, you'll remember how excited everyone was last year when MSC Virtuosa kicked us off from the UK. I was really fortunate to be on one of the first sailings of that ship. I think I was on number four. And at that point in time, Everyone that I spoke to was just buzzing and it was so exciting to be part of that. Now, the ships in Australia have taken a good bit of time longer to come back to operations and they only really started back in March, April of this year, so it's still pretty fresh. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, I guess what, did I say post-Covid, but post-Covid cruising actually looks like in this part of the world. I think there'll probably be a lot of mask wearing. I think there might still be a bit of social distancing because they were still doing that on the ships in the UK last summer. But hey, watch this space. But my general feel is that whatever we have to do to get back on the ships, I am willing to do it. If it means wearing a mask, fine, I will put one on. But yeah, so number one is Australia's restart to cruising. Number two is that I really, really like the Princess product. If you have watched my other vlog series, which was just, actually we've just finished it recently, it was on Discovery Princess where we went up to Alaska, my friend Laura and I. Now, the Princess product for me is one that I, it sounds daft saying it, but I just feel really comfortable with it. I get what they're doing, I like the fact it's not overly formal, it's not stuffy, and it's a cruise product that generally I think I would quite happily go back to over and over again, but on saying that, the princess product that I'm referring to is the kind of big three and a half thousand people, really modern, glitzy ships. So the only two princess ships that I've been on is Regal Princess and Discovery Princess, which both of them hold like just over 3,500 people. They were only launched either very recently or just a couple of years ago. Now Coral Princess, which is the ship I'm getting on today, was launched back in 2002. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the Princess product that I'm going to see this week is going to be fundamentally different, or I think it will anyway, to what I've seen before on those really big, maybe oversized ships in some people's opinion. Now, capacity-wise, this ship is also a lot smaller. So Coral Princess only holds about 1,900 people, which puts her in a bracket of being about half of the size of the ships that I'm used to from Princess. So yeah, very excited to see how that pans out. But if what I'm gonna see this week is similar to the other two, then yeah, I will be perfectly happy. But yeah, watch this space. And finally, the reason why I'm so excited for today is, and it, it just feels so weird that it's actually here. I have wanted to cruise from Sydney Harbour for years. I remember as a kid watching the fireworks over the bridge. Everyone around the world knows what that feels like on New Year when Usually, Australia, uh, well, I think Australia is pretty much first to bring in the new year. And it's like middle of the afternoon for us in the UK. And you just look at this amazing place and you think, how on earth can that be real? And there's a couple of times since I arrived here a few weeks back that I've almost had to pinch myself because it, it just doesn't feel like, it, it just feels like another world. So I think the feeling today is going to be just really, really strange to actually be here. But... I just can't wait because it's such a bucket list day for me and 
yeah, very, very excited to see how this one pans out. But look, my plan for today, probably enough talking is what you're all saying, but my plan for today is to shoot out now for brunch. My biggest tip on embarkation day is don't go hungry. Never, ever, ever show up at a ship hungry because a lot of people think they'll get to the port, it'll be 20 minutes at the check-in and then they'll be in the buffet and all the food will be included and that's you for the week. Now, what I've realised recently is that it can be so, um, it can be so different, the experience that you get at different ports. Now, I've never boarded at Sydney before, obviously, but recently I've had Southampton embarkation days where it's taken 20 minutes to get on the ship. And we've recently had a Seattle embarkation day, which took about two, <laughs> two and a half hours. So if we had arrived at Seattle port hungry, oh, I mean, we would have just been so annoyed and so angry by the time we got on the ship. So definitely never ever go hungry. Now, my plan to get from here, which is the western suburbs of Sydney, into um, the city centre is just to Uber. I was going to get a train, but looking at my luggage, which you'll probably see shortly, it's just going to be an absolute faff for one person to heave bags up and down escalators and up and down staircases, rather than just jump in a taxi and get popped off at the ship. But hey, look, for now, definitely enough talking. Let's get to the main part of today, which is to get down to the harbour and can't believe it, to get on the ship. So that's we just arrived at the terminal, about to go and check in, and to be honest, it feels a bit weird saying this. This ship apparently is pretty busy today, but the place is dead. I mean, I know the weather isn't ideal, unless everyone's already on before me, I do have quite a late slot. But if I spin around and show you what we're dealing with at the moment, you've got city here, coral is there, and the opera house is literally directly beside. So mad um but yeah get back under that umbrella um, anyway plan for today i am gonna get on i didn't actually find out if this place has got a version of like gg's pizzeria from discovery princess so if you followed that series you'll know that i hate the buffet on here on day one so try and find an alternative to the buffet and my feet are getting absolutely soaked in these puddles um but i guess i will update you properly when i get into the room What you're about to see here is how busy, or maybe not busy is the better way of putting it, Sydney Terminal actually is. Now this ship was completely full, but the guys who were dealing with the embarkation today did such an amazing job. Wait until you see down this corner, there was literally nobody here. <laughs> Which, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Okay, that's the best one yet. That's taken 10 minutes to get through. And now, it's time to get on the ship. Okay, so as you can probably tell, I'm now on the ship. Now, the cabin that I'm staying in this week is a standard outside cabin. Now, I had initially booked an inside, but unfortunately the last one of them went in the process of booking. So I've ended up here and do you know what? It looks like a really nice room. I'm actually really looking forward to being in here for a couple of nights. Now, basically for anyone that hasn't cruised before, it means that I don't have a balcony, but I at least have a window so I can see what's going on outside. Now, first impressions of this ship, beautiful, really, really nice. Definitely some areas where I think um, the ship is maybe beginning to show age a little bit, but that's to be expected when it was launched like 20 years ago. 
But yeah, really good looking ship. Now, one thing that's a real giveaway is I'll show you a couple of pictures from this room, but it's so traditional in here. There is wood, wood and wood panelling all over the place. So I'll show you a couple of pictures of that, but I've actually never seen that in a cruise ship cabin. I would expect that a company like Cunard would actually be very like wood heavy in the cabins, but yeah, maybe, if that's true and you've been with Cunard, let me know, I'd be very intrigued. But look, plan for today, um, I don't think Coral Princess has got a pizzeria, as I was saying outside, but what I have noticed, so I've got the good old daily schedule back out that we showed you on Discovery, and they do have, they do have a, a princess pizzeria, but it's on deck 14, so one would probably expect that'll be like a poolside to grab a slice of pizza and go, rather than it being like a restaurant, but to be fair, if it means avoiding the rush of the buffet, I'll be perfectly happy just grabbing a bit of pizza by the pool um, to try and enjoy what's up there. But look, today is going to fly away from us. The great thing is that there's a solo traveller meet up at quarter to five. So that's in, well, in about 15 minutes from now, actually. So that's in a bar, which I'm never convinced with a solo traveller meet up in a bar. Because if you walk in any later than the second person, you're not actually sure where the solo travellers are unless it's hosted by like a member of the crew. So we'll wait and see what it's like on here, but certainly on Discovery, it wasn't hosted. So yeah, see how that ends up and see if I actually do manage to meet anyone. Now, next thing after that, I've made a dinner reservation tonight for 8.40. Now, later than I would like, but it's the only time. Actually, I didn't make a reservation because the app errored on me. Now, that's not ideal. I'm just gonna have to turn up to the dining room and hope there's a table for me. But I tried to book 8.40, which was the only available time, and it kept saying error. So who knows, I might go I might go hungry tonight. Um, could probably do with it after all the pizza that I'm about to eat. But yeah, so dinner will hopefully be later, and then there's a couple of shows and stuff later on. But what I'll do, I'll come back and walk you through the nightly schedule in a bit, just after we've been to the, the solo catch-up. But yeah, first impressions, Pretty good. Okay, so that is over pretty quickly. Um, I, oh man, went to the bar and got told that it's not a hosted solo traveler meetup, which, which is fine, but they actually weren't sure if there were any solo travelers there. So was walked around the room by a member of the crew saying, ah, are you guys solo? Are you guys solo? Are you guys solo? With me in tow, which, oh all around a very awkward situation but um yeah the end result is that actually we haven't found anyone so i have now been shown to this little bit where it's only me so the, <laughs> the only saving grace is that at least there's a beer and yeah we'll maybe try that again i don't know over dinner or something because that <laughs> that didn't go well but for now cheers if in doubt just Go and eat pizza. So that is exactly what I did here for lunch and got up on the top deck and had, I'm gonna say I only had one, but yeah, say no more. Okay, just finished lunch and just heading around the ship, really trying to trying to get my bearings because I've never been on one quite like this one before. Um, now, I generally, I would say that I'm not an emotional person, but to say that being on these decks doesn't completely overwhelm me would be an absolute understatement. I mean, look, at, you're literally directly beside the Harbour Bridge, which is just like amazing. And then I'll show you around the other side. If I show you over there, you're literally docked right beside the Sydney Opera House. Like, honestly, amazing. Yeah, one of the downsides to the weather being like this for your sail away is that the decks are like totally dead. Obviously, because no one actually wants to be out in the rain. But, do you know, my tip for sailing away in this kind of climate is look, bring an umbrella. Like, why bother locking yourself inside at a bar when that's exactly what you can do all night? Pack an umbrella, come out, you've literally got the entire ship to yourself as you sail away from somewhere like this. Um, and to be fair, the weather isn't the weather isn't that bad. Like, yes, it's raining, but it's hardly a typhoon. So 
yeah, up here to see if anything happens for sale away. I reckon it's probably moved to the atrium, really. But you try and get a good view, maybe get the Princess Horn, which anyone that followed Alaska will know that I absolutely love that. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, for now, I'll show you sail away from Sydney on Coral Princess. Okay, so we've now officially backed out. The weather is actually getting worse, but do you know what? Actually, <laughs> in this current situation, do I care? Nah, not at all. Like, this is absolutely remarkable. I mean, look at it. Okay, I don't know if you'll actually be able to hear that music, but I remember this song playing as Virtuoso sailed out of Southampton, and very weirdly, as if you can even get, like, bugged up or emotional on a cruise ship, like, literally sailing away from a port, it's the weirdest thing, but I think this cruise is just so good that it shows that after what everyone has had to put up with over the last, what, coming up on three years, like, actually the world is opening again and it's just yeah good to see um but anyway enough of that time to enjoy the rest of the sail away grab a beer and chill out Okay, literally speaking of Virtuosa, did they really need to play this song because this is not as helping? This is what I remember leaving Norway this year, covered in goosebumps, unable to believe what I was seeing. Ugh. Anyway, Opera House is right here. We are en route out of Sydney Harbour. probably one of my absolute favourites. That was, oh, it was, it was weird. It was like, I mean, the wettest for a start, but also like the most weirdly emotional one. Um, yeah, a very strange 30 minutes, but yeah, anyway, we are heading south now. So we're just heading out into the bay. And then from here, we're gonna head south to the port of Eden, which I can't wait to show you what that looks like on Monday when we get there. Um, I'm going to head back to the room now because, as you can see, I am literally like a drowned rat. Um, so I'll talk you through the plan for tonight when we get back down there because, yeah, I am not dry and I'm not comfortable right now. So I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay, that's me back in the room ready for dinner. So I am 
delighted to not be absolutely frozen to the core anymore. Do you ever get that way when you're standing in the rain and you think, I actually can't remember what it was like to be dry and what it was like to be warm? <laughs> That's basically what just happened during that sail away. I honestly don't think I've ever been that wet before, but <laughs> yeah, plan for tonight. I am going to head out to the main dining room tonight. So um, yeah, Princess last time when I was on Discovery, I genuinely felt as though they'd really upped their game in terms of food. So I'm very keen to see if that was because Discovery was in her inaugural season being a brand new ship or actually if the quality tonight is going to reflect genuinely what Princess offer now. So very excited to see the outcome of that. After that, what's going on after that? So there is a, ah, okay, two other things. Number one, there's a Lady Gaga show, which not really my vibe, but it's in the theatre. So usually Princess have got decent shows. So actually quite looking forward to that. And then finally, kind of torn, there's trivia, but as you know, I can't really do a quiz, so I feel as though if I go to that, I'll just shame myself, which, as a solo traveller who hasn't met anyone on board yet, that's a pretty dire situation to be in, <laughs> with a whole room wishing that you weren't in their team. So I think I'm probably going to go to, there's like a piano and vocal entertainer, which some of them could be really good. So we were on Piano Ventura, and there was a girl, Rosie, on that, and actually she was fantastic. So if it's a similar kind of act, I'm really looking forward to that as well. But hey, look, that means that this is probably the last time that I'm going to speak to you for today. So I hope that you've enjoyed seeing what sailing out of Sydney looks like. Now, tomorrow I've got all day on the ship. I'm still going to take you out with me tonight, so don't go yet. There's still a fair bit to see. But for now, look, if you've enjoyed this, please think about subscribing to the channel. It really does help to bring you more content from more ships. And yeah, I guess... Without further ado, let's get out and explore this ship. Now, dinner for me tonight was in the Bordeaux dining room, which is one of the two main dining rooms on board Coral Princess. Now, delighted to say that the quality of food on here was really, really good. I was a bit worried coming on here after being on Discovery because I've seen some cruise lines before that put the best teams and the best chefs and the best menus on the new ship, so it means that when you go on the older ones, you're left a little bit disappointed. But on here this week, definitely not. Now, after dinner, it was along to the Princess Theatre. Now, I arrived, what, about 10, 15 minutes after the show had already started, unfortunately. And what you will see in here is just how busy it was. It was really good to see that although Australian cruising is just getting back, they're still allowed to be all gathered in the theatre. Granted, the requests are to wear masks throughout the entire show. And generally, people did do that but really, really well supported. And actually the entertainment on this ship for this cruise was pretty decent. And that's it, that is embarkation day on Coral Princess out of Sydney. Now in the next video, I'm going to be showing you what a full day at sea on this ship looks like as we head south towards Eden. So remember to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. That would be great. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.